Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm creating a platform pop-up. Yes, um, I did attempt this again and thankfully the results were slightly better than the last one I did. I am using some Heffy Doodle products today. So this is the Farmyard Fun stamp set. And I am also using the Adderley Fabulous stamp set which are these cute little cows i just love them and finally the lawn fawn platform pop-up die so off camera i went ahead and cut all the pieces for my platform pop-up and attached all the double-sided tape and folded all along the score lines now you will be pleased to know that i had a lot more success with this platform pop-up than i did with my previous one if you watched my last um, platform pop-up video um, I had a bit of trouble with that. So what I did this time was when I was doing my die sandwich to go through my die machine, I added an extra piece of cardstock to act as a shim. So I had my um, base plate, my um, patterned paper, my die on top with the cut side face down. Then I had an extra piece of cardstock and then my top um, platform um, for the die machine. And that extra little bit of thickness really helped to um, help me get the score lines in exactly the right place. And so I was really, really happy with that because last time the score lines didn't seem to show up particularly well. I do have an old die cutting machine. I probably should invest in a new one, um, but this worked and I was really, really happy. I was really able to see where the score lines were and then fold them very easily. So that's a little trick if you have trouble like me with um, any of your um, score lines on the, on the die cuts, try that out. Just put a little bit of extra cardstock in with the sandwich and it really helps the, um, the score lines to show up. So I did manage to cut off the end of making the platform pop-up box, but um, You've probably seen the lawn form videos on how to do it. It's quite easy to attach. It's actually very quick to come together. I did cut the um, platform pop-up add-on and I cut these letters from Henry's ABCs and I'm just stacking them up so that I've got a little bit of shadow behind the patterned paper. And once I'd done that, I decided to assemble everything on top of my um, add-on before actually putting it into the box. I just found it easier to do this while it was flat and it's much easier to kind of put everything where you want it to um, want it to be. So that's what I did. <laughs> um, you could easily do this once the box was assembled, but I kind of had a very good idea of where I wanted everything. So it was quite easy for me to do. So I just started with the two outer letters and then added the one in the middle to try and get it nice and evenly evenly spaced and I did cut some of the little clouds that come with the platform um, pop-up add-on and I'm just going to use those to kind of scatter around um, I obviously want this kind of blue gingham part to look a little bit like the sky so um, with the word dad floating in there which is a bit random but yeah that was the idea behind it just to add a few little clouds to set the scene um, so the papers I've used have come from the Lawn Fawn Nitpicky collection. So the, the green, the yellow, and um, yeah, that was it. Just the green and the, the yellow came from the Nitpicky collection, which was the 12 by 12 paper pack that I had. And then this gingham piece comes from their newer um, Gotta Have Gingham Rainbow collection. And this is the six by six pad. And you can see at the top there, I've also cut that little um, kind of rectangle piece, which fits onto the front of the platform pop up perfectly. So I'm going to attach this. I've got my score tape on the back and I'm going to attach it into my um, platform pop up. And um, I always find this a little bit tricky to get in exactly the right spot. <laughs> It's a bit of, uh, it's a little bit fiddly to try and get it in there without everything kind of being stuck in the wrong place. But I did get there eventually and it all folds up really nicely. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I did have a little bit of overhang just on the left hand edge, but it looked like I had everything kind of in the right spot. So um, it was fine. It was just a tiny, tiny little bit. You can just see me there fiddling with it there and it, it works perfectly. So I'm very, very happy with how this one turned out. 
And off screen, I went ahead and stamped the little sentiment for that um, piece that I'm gonna to attach to the front, which says, have an utterly fabulous day. And this just works really nicely with my images and the sentiment for Father's Day. So um, I was really happy with that. So that was the platform pop-up finished, and then it was on to my coloring. So I um, stamped these out with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and onto some Transitype Perfect Coloring Paper. And now I'm just gonna go ahead with my Copex and color these in. So for this little trailer, I'm using G21, G24, and G28, I believe. If I get any of these wrong, I will be listing everything in the description below, so you can check there, just to double check. Um, but this little trailer I'm colouring in with these green markers and just adding some shadow um, kind of underneath that little rim and to either side and then blending out from um, darkest to medium to lightest as I always do and just doing a couple of coats to get those blends nice and smooth and even. And um, I just thought that this colour was quite apt. I, <laughs> I think it's quite a good, uh, a little bit kind of John Deere-ish, if you know your tractors. <laughs> um, I come from New Zealand, so a very rural community, and I lived in very rural England for a long time. So there are a lot of tractors around, and they tend to be this kind of green colour or red or blue. At least that's what I've seen. Um, so just went in for the tires i used my n markers so n8 and n6 and then for the inner parts i'm using the lighter n markers so i think it was n4 and n2 um so onto the tires for this tractor so n8 n6 and adding in the n4 as well because obviously these are a little bit bigger and just laying in some shadow and then blending out to lighter um I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am not an expert when it comes to Copic colouring. I certainly do my best, but I have learnt most, well, I've learnt everything really from watching other people on YouTube colour. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm always learning, always learning new techniques, always learning new ideas and new combinations. Um, but yeah, I, I do my best and the main thing is that it's a lot of fun, so I always enjoy doing it. So just um, finishing that one off and then I'm going to add some colour to the rest of my tractor. So um, going into the little centres again and to the lighter parts of, um, sorry, the accessory parts of the tractor if you like. So my N2 and N4 and I'm going to just make some of these little accessories look like metal just to contrast with the colour of the tractor which I'm going to do red. So again, just going in with my darkest marker and then blending out with my lightest. So I go in with a little bit of Y13 and um, just add some color to the lights and those kind of uh, little bits of the tire. <laughs> I don't know what those are called. Um, and then I did go back in with the Y15, just add a little bit of contrast to those areas. Um, they're just tiny, tiny parts. So just added a tiny bit of color there. And then it was on to coloring the tractor proper. So R59, R27, R24 and R22. And I'm really enjoying adding in this kind of darker red, this R59, which is a lot darker than the other colors I use. I use it very sparingly, just a tiny, tiny bit to add some shadow. Um, but I really think it helps the other reds really pop. Um, and really, I really like the contrast. I really like the look that it gives. So um, I've been using that a lot lately when I'm using my reds.
So for the window, I'm going to use BG10 and BG11 and just add a tiny little bit of color um, just to make it look like glass. So after that, it was on to my little farmer and I used some B markers for his dungarees to make them kind of look like um, denim dungarees. So B99, B97 and B95. And again, just laying in my darker shadows and then blending out towards lightest. And I did do this a couple of times as well. Um, I just think these little images are absolutely adorable. I have completely and utterly fallen in love with Heffy Doodle. And I'm so excited about all the things that I have. <laughs> I'm gonna be crafting with these guys a lot, I think. Um, but these little cows and the tractor and the farmer, they're just so fun. And I really love the little sentiments that come with that. I think Heffy Doodle do their sentiments really, really well. Um, quite different from other companies and I love the mix of fonts that they use um, and I just think that they are really really cute and adorable images and I like the fact that I can use these um, for a variety of different occasions so obviously today I'm making a um, Father's Day card but they would be equally at home on a little boy's birthday card or a little girl's birthday card um, on, on kind of any occasion really. So I, I love the versatility of them. So for my little farmer's shirt, I am using red markers again. So those same red markers, R27, R24 and R22. And for his little shoes, I'm using, uh, uh, sorry, E44 and E43. And I'm gonna use those same shades on his hair, um, but I'm gonna bring in the E41 as well, just to add a little bit more contrast. Um, hair is something I'm not so good at, but I'm practicing and getting better. Um, it's all about flicking motions, I think. Um, I do go back in a, again with a, a second coat of everything, and I think it ends up looking okay. Um, but obviously these small areas, they're quite difficult to color in realistically. And at the end of the day, these aren't realistic images, so I'm not too worried about it. And I think it looks kind of fun. For my little farmer's skin, I'm going in with E000 and E00, um, very, very pale colours, um, but, you know, <laughs> farmers don't see a lot of sun, actually they see a lot of sun, don't they, they're outside all day, but anyway, those are the colours I chose, um, I just had them kind of to hand, so I just grabbed hold of them, and just that it's only a small, small area. Um, R20 for his little cheeks and then that was my little farmer done and it was on to my cows uh, and I decided to color these like Frisians I don't know Frisians are kind of my favorite cow so black and white so I'm using N8, N6 and N4 and coloring in the kind of hair on top of their heads and some of the little splotches around their bodies in the darker markers and then I'll go in with some lighter end markers to do their little body parts. Um, this guy is, oh my gosh, he's just so cute. I love him. <laughs> I love the fact that he's kind of peeking over something. Um, it could be peeking over anything really, but I'm going to pop him inside my little tractor trailer today and have him peeking out of that. He's probably a bit big really for my tractor trailer, but um, he fits in there nicely and he just looks so cute. So that was uh, the idea today. So just going into my second cow and then just adding a little bit of um, that darker, those darker combinations to the little splotches to make her look like a Frisian cow. And finally, I have this little guy who's having a break, sitting down, <laughs> he's, he's had enough. Or she, I should say, really, probably a female cow, I imagine. 
Um, so again, just coloring in that kind of fat lock part and then um, kind of adding little darker parts to various areas of the cow. I wasn't 100% sure where I was gonna do the darker parts on that sitting one. I just decided to do it to the back leg in the end. And then I realized that I hadn't colored their hooves. So I went back in with um, those darker markers, N8 and N6, just to color in their hooves and make them look nice and dark. So for the rest of them, I used N2 and N0 and then blended out with the colorless blender just to kind of make them look white. Um, I think the great thing about these cows is you could really color them in any color you like. They would look great as Jersey cows as well, brown and white. And um, you, I mean, you could go to town, you could color them rainbow if you wanted. <laughs> um, they're just so fun and cute. And I really, really love these images. So I had so much fun coloring these today. Um, so there you can see I'm just adding in a little bit of shadow with my darker marker um, and then blending out with my mid-tone and then going in with the colorless blender just to fade out to white completely. Um, I always find this a little bit tricky. I, I always worry that sometimes I make it end up looking too gray um, rather than white. Um, but it's a learning curve, I'm getting there and uh, as I say, I learn most of my stuff from watching other people. So um, always keen to try new techniques. Um, but I just like the fact that this makes them look like they're white but without being stark, if that makes sense. So for their little um, snouts, noses, not sure what to call them, uh, I went back in with those um, E markers, so E00 and E000, the same that I used on the skin for my farmer. And I'm just adding um, those little shades in to their little snouts, the horns, the inside of their ears. And on the guy that's sitting down, I also did those colors for that kind of patch of skin um, showing underneath his belly. And then um, I just finished those off with a little bit of R20 for their cheeks and on the inside of their ears as well. So for the little cow's bow, I used YR23 and YR21, just to kind of make it look like a um, typical cow bow that you might see. And once that was finished, I went on to my little um, shovel and I realized afterwards that I probably didn't need to color all of this in because I'm actually just using it as a coupling between my tractor and trailer. So the only part you're gonna see is the kind of stick part of it which I probably should have colored in in my end markers. But I was so happy uh, coloring away here that I just completely forgot about it <laughs> and colored it as I would have colored a shovel. So um, it's fine because we're not going to see these parts and it's just a tiny, tiny bit that you are actually going to see. For my little milk pail, I colored it in N4, N2 and N0. And I did actually make a little mistake there. You can see that very first bit that I colored, I should have left um, blank because it's actually not meant to be the inside of the pail, which is what I thought it was initially. Um, so I do end up having to go back in with my um, colorless blender and just kind of blend that out a little bit to get rid of the color, which I did do and it turned out fine. Um, so there we go. I'm just using it to kind of dab out the color um, so that it's not quite so noticeable. 
And I'm gonna do the same on this other one. I obviously stamped out too. And then for my um, little sign, the little milk sign, I'm gonna go in with my E40 markers and I'm also gonna use those for the milk um, just to kind of add a little bit of that kind of creamy, creamyish color, I guess, to, um, to those areas. So I'm using E43, E41 and E40. Um, so I was, yeah, I wasn't sure. I was kind of debating doing these little signs in blue and that probably would have been quite nice as well, but I decided to go with those kind of E colors um, and I think it turned out okay as well. Um, so my little milk bottles are gonna obviously be full of milk. <laughs> and um, in New Zealand, when I was a kid, we used to have these old fashioned milk bottles, obviously made of glass. I think most milk bottles are made of plastic these days, or you buy them in the little bags. Um, but in New Zealand, when I was growing up, and I'm probably showing my age here, we had the old fashioned milk bottles that had these kind of foil tops and you had different colored foil tops for different types of milk. So I think blue, I'm thinking, I'm remembering, um, was full fat milk and red was like skimmed milk. And then you had a silver one as well, which I can't quite remember. But I decided to do mine blue because it tied in with the little outfit that the farmer was wearing. So that's where that inspiration came from, <laughs> for a little bit of knowledge there. Um, and then I'm just going in with my white Secura Jelly Roll pen and adding some little highlight details to everything. So once all my colouring was done, I went ahead and fussy cut everything off screen. And now it's time to kind of build my images and create my scene. So here's where um, I'm talking about using this kind of little um, spade to create the coupling between the tractor and the trailer. So you don't actually end up seeing the spade <laughs> at all, um, but it's okay, it's, it works fine. And although it's brown, I don't think you really notice it that much. And I'm gonna stick this little guy into my trailer and he probably does look a little bit disproportionate, um, but he's just so cute in there, isn't he? <laughs> I kind of couldn't resist putting him inside the little tractor. And now I'm gonna pull my platform pop-up over and I'm gonna attach everything. I'm sticking my images behind the grass because I kind of want the little grass to be peeking up um, over everything so it makes it look like they're, they're kind of in the long grass in a field. Um, so that was the idea behind that. I'm kind of just popping everything in with liquid glue. Um, in hindsight, I kind of wish that I had used some glue dots because there are a few things that I would have liked to have moved around once I'd kind of got everything complete. Um, this little farmer being the first one, I wish I'd put him on the other side um, rather than on the side where the tractor is because then I've got kind of the two pieces with red in them so the tractor and the farmer's shirt and right next to each other um so yeah i i probably would have done things slightly differently if i could redo it um but and you know on the whole i'm pretty happy with how it turned out um this little guy kind of popped in the middle and then i put the little standing guy at the front um, and i was just trying to figure out where i was going to put him I really wanted to be able to see that little um, kind of cow in the trailer 
So I decided I kind of made the left side of the platform pop up a little bit image heavy, if you like. Um, in the end, you kind of, uh, it, it's quite busy, um, but I still really like it. I think it works. Um, you obviously get all the dimension and um, the layers and I really like that. Um, when it's kind of just sitting upright and you're looking directly at it, you can't really see what's going on in the back layer, um, but it kind of works. I, I, I don't know, I like it, <laughs> I do like it. I probably would have moved things around a little bit differently um, had I done it uh, again, but it's okay. So just to finish off, I created this little panel out of some scraps of green cardstock that I had and just put the sentiment, I love Moo on it, which I thought was really sweet and a little milk bottle at the bottom. Obviously this is a little place for someone to write the message. And that's it, platform pop-up completed. And I'm really happy with how this turned out and I love the images. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about it. So please do leave a comment. Please do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and do subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you come back again. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care.